afternoon everyone thanks for joining us today um, it looks like it's a pretty good turnout as well which is nice um, so my name's Lucy for those who don't know I'm part of the senior sales team at Airship and Toggle and I'm really really happy to be introduced in the webinar today I've actually completely lost count as to how many we've done now <laughs> um, our comeback strong campaign has been taken really really well by the sector so thanks to everyone getting involved um, and if this is your first one, then as part of our Comeback Strong campaign, we have had, um, we, we, sorry, we've made our platforms Airship CRM and Toggle completely free of charge for all of hospitality, all the way until we fully reopen the sector in June. Um, it's been taken really positively so far. Um, so if you're not already, then do get in touch and we'll get you set up. Now, this is a really, really exciting week, I think. So I'm sure many, many of you went to the pub last night <laughs> and sat outside and enjoyed a pint, a real pint. Um, so yeah, it's a great week already. And it's also my birthday tomorrow, so even better. Um, but also oh. I get to introduce, <laughs> um, I get to introduce Vita Mojo. So they're commercial director, Nick, and head of product, Rob, uh, for today's masterclass. And Vita Mojo are a tech company building smarter digital ordering and back of house solutions uh, for the hospitality industry. So we work really, really closely together. They started as an operator, but the tech stack they wish they could have, um, they've been testing and refining in their, uh, their technology in their own restaurants. So today, Vita Mojo powers the digital transformation of brands we all love, like Nando's, Leon, Yo, Brewhouse and Kitchen, and also Honest Burger and many more. Um, and to help the operators get back on their feet, they've actually come, uh, before we, well, we come out of lockdown anyway, um, Visa Mojo are offering one free month for all new customers until the end of May, which is very generous. Um, and we work really seamlessly with them, both on Airship CRM and Toggle. The ultimate aim really is to encourage the repeat orders, database growth, and obviously keeping engaged with the customers. Um, but I'm sure Nick and Rob have plenty of real life examples they can share. Um, and so I'll probably pass over to you guys. But before I do, if anyone's got any questions, just pop them in the bottom here where the Q&A section is. And we can cover them probably all at the end, if that works for Nick and Rob. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for that intro. And thank you for everybody for, um, for joining us today um, on this uh, sunny Tuesday. Um, so we're here to talk to you about uh, the power of data and how you can use data to help transform your operations. Um, so firstly, intros. I am the guy on the left hand side, so I can't skateboard. <clears throat> I don't have any hair, but I've always wanted to be Martin McFly skateboarding behind the pickup truck. Um, so that's me. I'm the commercial director of Vita Mojo. Uh, I look after everything to do with um, marketing and sales uh, and partnerships and just generally trying to grow the Vita Mojo brand. And I am, guess I'm the guy on the right. Uh, Nick did the slide, so thanks for that. Uh, so I'm head of product, so I am, am responsible for the roadmap and making improvements and trying to, trying to see how we can make our, our product more useful to our clients. You are a dot brown. Rob. Um, so firstly, some validation. Um, so as Lucy said, we started with our own restaurants. Um, these are our co-founders, as you, you know, for the, those with a keen eye, that's not us, but those are our co-founders, uh, Nick and Stefan. And, and we built restaurants uh, five, six years ago, really at a time when there was very little digital ordering in the marketplace. Hospitality hadn't yet been disrupted by it. Um, any kind of digital ordering. This predates kiosks in McDonald's. There was a very small amount of click and collect happening in the industry. And the reason for doing that is because we really wanted to focus on an environment which was 100% digital ordering. So we could learn how um, customers would react, um, how, they would, how they would behave in that kind of environment. But equally, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create data. So data insights that we could use both from a marketing perspective so how could we understand customer behavior? Um, how, could we, um, how could we get their feedback? How could we reward them? Um, and equally, how could we use data from an operational perspective to make our operations more efficient? And how could we create lots of different ordering channels and then aggregate those efficiently? Um, 
And so against that backdrop, we were able to um, move almost 40% of our overall sales through click and collect at a time again, when that industry average was about two to 5%. Um, and that allowed us to acquire lots of rich data insights into customer behavior. And then we plugged all of that into a CRM and did lots of kind of niche stuff to try and test how that would work. Um, so with a lot of work around digital ordering that we have now since channeled into a new platform that uh, we took to market in 2019 fully. Uh, and of course, over the last year and a half, uh, especially the last 12 months, we've seen a lot of growth. So that gives you some indication of our background. So we very much, as a company, always had a vision around how the hospitality sector would be disrupted and how data is an essential component part of, of that disruption. And fast forward to today, and again, as Lucy said, we work with a, a fantastic number of brands now. Um, we are trying to seek out partnerships with brands for whom their brand is important to them and who are looking to change. So looking to develop, looking to go on a digital journey, looking to go from analog to digital. And that's a really key part of how we work with um, our clients. And you know, we have some very big clients like Nando's and we have some very small clients. Um, but what we try and do, as I said, is work in partnership with all those clients and take them on that digital journey and work with them in partnership. And that's super key as we go forward. We've got some case studies around how we've done that with some other clients, obviously with, with data at the heart of those case studies. Um, and we can bring those to life uh, uh, a little bit later on. So um, three component parts. Um, so firstly, I guess a kind of very broad macro view of a new digital landscape for hospitality, what that really means. Um, again, a lot of it will, you know, a lot of it won't be new to you as such, but it, it's great to create that context around how the hospitality sector has evolved over the last 12 months. What, you know, what COVID has done and how digital, um, how the adoption of digital ordering um, has accelerated throughout the sector, irrespective of the vertical within hospitality that you work in. Rob will look at the specific opportunity and the challenges therein. Um, and then he'll have, he has a very handy four-step plan to success that he's quite happy to share with you today, it seems. Um, so that new digital landscape. So we talk about this journey from being analog to digital. Now we've seen it in other industries. Um, but for hospitality, um, it's an essential part of the change process that we've seen a lot of over the last 12 months. So brands adopting digital technology, starting to understand the benefits. And so this journey from analog, analog to digital is now creating opportunity for hospitality brands to really move forward um, and adapt the, the way they work. Now we've seen it in other sectors, we've seen it in music, we've seen it uh, with Amazon across um, you know, a number of different verticals, we've seen it with Netflix. Um, so it's not, it's not a new journey, but certainly for hospitality, this is a very new experience. Um, so it's something that we really need to kind of dive into so that we can identify those opportunities, but equally those challenges that come with those opportunities and how to solve for those challenges as we go forward. So, so this is some of our own data. It's quite, it's quite obvious data. And as much as um, there's been a huge swing from traditional ordering methods through to digital ordering channels, obviously this is an extreme version given the amount of time that we spent in lockdown through 2020. But clearly what's happened is there's been this adoption of tech um, throughout the, hospita the hospitality sector in slightly different ways, depending on, again, depending on the hospitality verticals. So if you're in casual dining, it's slightly different to quick service restaurants, for example. But fundamentally, there's been this huge swing, um, which is fantastic. Fantastic, I think, for the sector, obviously fantastic for us because we've very much focused on digital ordering as an organization. Um, but what it does do is it brings opportunity. It brings some complexity, but primarily it brings opportunity. And today we're really gonna kind of delve into that opportunity. So um, as we said before, we work with Nando's. So Nando's is a, is a great example, obviously an extreme example because of their size, but they've changed their whole operational flow. So whereas you used to come in, you go to the counter, as you can see on the left, you place your order, you pay, you sit down, the food's brought to you and you kind of repeat as you go, the advent of 
table digital ordering channel means that you change that flow that the customer now comes to sit they use their own devices their menu template to then start to place those or a huge amount of benefit um, to the point where there is um, a huge percentage of their overall sales so between 80 and 90 percent of sales going through one of our platforms whether it be order and pet table and click and collect um, that means they get they've had literally millions of unique sign-ons um, through the platform and so have now accessed um, this whole raft of customer data which obviously they didn't previously have uh, which can be obviously transformational for a brand and to be a little bit more technical what does that really look like um, for for a restaurant brand so we talk about going from analog to digital so but it is a journey and different hospitality brands are at different stages of that journey and really our job is to work with different brands, you know, irrespective of where that their starting point is and try and understand their challenges uh, and how we can work in partnership to move them through these different stages. But fundamentally, you start as an analog hospitality business and the next step is to digitize some of those key processes. So that could be order taking, it can be the fulfillment side of the business, but fundamentally what you're trying to do is you're trying to generate data. The data on your customers, data on your operations, you then feed that data through, and then you can start to personalize the experience. You can start to automate the experience. Um, you generate these actionable insights on how you're operating as a brand, and then you flood those data insights back in, you generate more data, um, and it becomes your flywheel. It becomes your digital flywheel. Um, uh, and then it becomes a holy grail. So the holy grail is deliver those personalized experience for your customers, Ultimately, that increases their lifetime value. So already through digitizing key processes, you can understand who your customer is and you understand when they consume, what they buy across and across which channels. And you start to understand the value of that customer to you as a brand. And that's super important as you move forward. So that's, I guess, the kind of more complex view, but fundamentally it's a journey from being an analog business becoming a digital business, um, you generate this data and it's, I guess it's Rob's role to explain to you how you then use that data effectively as you go forward. And the final slide for me before I hand over to Rob. Um, so this is a slightly complex view of uh, a digital operational system. So this is our operating system, if you like, it could be ours, it could be any operating system, but this is how we describe what we do at Vita Mojo. Um, what you have is you have a hub. Um, so that kitchen and capacity management system is your hub. And what that hub does is it aggregates lots of different channels. So that could be self-serve kiosks in your restaurant. It could be scan and go for your grab and go. It can be order and pay at table for your casual dining restaurant. It could be click and collect. It could be your EPOS. And all of those different channels the orders from those channels are then coming into your kitchen and capacity management system. And they will either hit the kitchen display screen so that you can, you can fulfill those orders in real time. You can manage them through the management panels by managing your menu across all of those different channels. You can pull all of that data into reporting. And then we make that data available to partners. So for example, Airship is a great CRM partner of ours and hosting today. Um, we can work with Toggle to do both, to pull data and to send data back into the Toggle platform so that we could allow for vouchering again, one of our partners for today. We can pull all of the aggregator, delivery aggregator data into our platform uh, and equally we can push menus back out. We can allow for subscriptions, we can allow for feedback, uh, we can help with stock management and flow data into stock management systems. So fundamentally, this is your operating system that's creating data insights from a number of different touch points, whether it be customer facing or operational. And by using those, that data effectively, you can really supercharge the way that you'll manage your business and your brand. And I'm gonna hand over to Rob, who's gonna tell you how. Thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, so if you go to the next slide, uh, the future really is, is here. Um, so I actually used to, to be a, a strategy and, and data analyst in, in finance and, and then in marketing. And it, it is, you know, coming in from, from outside of hospitality. I have to sometimes remind myself how, 
how blind uh, restaurants have had to operate for so many years due to a lack of data. And we really are at this cusp of, of unlocking enormous amounts of insight and enormous amounts of value all over the place um, as everything goes digital. Uh, going digital generates this data, which can then be used in, in lots of different ways. And, and digital ordering is leading the charge. So the next slide, we have an example of a, a view you can have of a, a customer these days. Uh, so you no longer just have to go, here's some anonymous sales interactions. You can, you can boil down, you can know the name and their preferences, how often they come, how much they spend. You can really get towards that, that lifetime value, which, which everyone wants in order to, to target their marketing and to, to try and, and, and personalize and improve those relationships. But really that kind of digital ordering is only, only part of the bigger picture. So the next slide we have lots of examples, but not exhaustive list of all the different things you can do, whether it's sales, whether it's your, your kitchen operations and understanding where your bottlenecks are and increasing the flows, whether it's your menu design, your strategy about where you're going to locate your stores, your marketing schemes, your loyalty, your gift cards, your discounts, subscription. Um, you know, there's, there's precedent for this in, in dozens of industries that once you start capturing data, you don't necessarily know where you're going to end up, but every decision you make starts to be a bit more informed. And then you start to answer the next biggest question you have and the next biggest question you have. And over time, the whole industry is, is transformed and, and, you know, working at Vita Mojo with the, the, the offerings we have and working with, with great partners such as, such as Eshif and Toggle, it's really exciting to be at the, the cutting edge of, of what's going on. It's, a, it's an amazing space to be, to be building and working in technology, building and working in data. But most people aren't quite there yet. Um, and so the reality of what we see right now is that there are these, these enormous aspirations, um, but everyone's kind of bogged down in, in details of, of just getting stuff to work, of getting systems to, to work together, of, of trying to understand what it means, of trying to do, do the next thing. And it's painful and it's hard because technology and data it can be painful. It's complicated. It's not, a, it's not a simple space to operate in. And there's a few different reasons behind that. Uh, on the next slide, we're talking about volumes more data than had ever been there before. And a lot of, a lot of hospitality companies don't have or yet have the expertise or the people they need to, to make sense of it and to know how to, to use it effectively. Nick showed uh, an example of a technology stack and you can see there's now potentially 10, 15 systems you're interacting with day to day, each generating data in their own way, each sending it in, in different places and trying to combine that into a useful view can take a lot of work. Even if you've got that and you captured it, you have to figure out how to use it effectively. You still have to, to drive those insights which are relevant for your business. Um, and it's a big undertaking uh, and we'll talk more about it as we go through, but it's not something which you can expect to work without investing time into. But we believe that the value, if you invest that time is so, is so great that, um, that it will, it'll pay for itself many times over. And so we've kind of put this in quotes because uh, it's, it's not fully serious. Um, we don't have all the answers. Uh, you know, we've been doing digital for a while uh, in our own restaurants. We, we operate in a, a range of products in, in different areas, but, but there is no one solution. Um, you know, nothing we're going to talk about is, is, is revolutionary. Uh, but hopefully some of it will be useful for, for where you are in the journey um, and in, in trying to think about how you go from, from where you are now to, to realizing your aspirations in data. So step one, always start with the exciting one, audit your current data. Um, maybe you're there with a, with a technology stack you're, you're super happy with, maybe you, you chose it very carefully, or maybe you were driven by circumstances to quickly sign some deals and get certain digital ordering channels up and running and, and you're not quite sure where you're at and you haven't had a chance to breathe because of, because of endless lockdowns and, uh, and, and so on. And so, you know, it, don't panic, take a deep breath, uh, sit down and spend an hour thinking about what systems you have, what data they're generating, and then think about what's missing. And, and we're going to talk through 
a few things which we think you should be demanding of the systems that you use. We think are, are, are vital pieces of data without which you're going to struggle to, to do the following steps. So it's all about getting the foundations in place. Um, and even if you can't use the data effectively right now, if you capture it, it means you're generating it. And then when you have time in the future, you'll have this, this rich data set of, of months of data rather than not addressing it till then, at which point you haven't got any history and you need to wait for it to build up again. So on the next slide, we'll start with um, sales data. Uh, and sales data, we broadly divide into, into three. So you start with your, your identifiable channels. So that's any channel where the customer is, you know, in our system logged in or at least providing a, an email. Um, so that's your click and collect for most people. Uh, for those who've chosen to do order and pay at table, um, that'll, also, that'll also count. Um, and then we, you know, we have trials with, with own delivery and, and, and you know, uh, operating something where the customer is logged in using your system. And in that situation, you should be getting everything and the kitchen sink. There shouldn't be anything that you're not able to find out. It's your own channel. You should be able to know who they are. You should be able to know what they ordered, what channel, how it relates to what they previously ordered, dietary preferences, name, anything else you want to capture, you should be able to get. And actually beyond that, you know, that's great once they order and it hits the systems, but you should be able to get analytics. You should be able to see how they move through the journey. Maybe you're having people who drop off on certain pages because they're hard to use or because they don't understand. Um, maybe you want to see what sources they're coming through. So um, we work with, uh, with people at Vaporetto and, and Brain Food to run digital marketing campaigns, which land people onto, say, our ordering experiences and then allow you to track conversion right the way through to order or store selection or, or any of the other pages. So you should be very demanding of, of the information you can get because this is your, your richest data set in terms of your customers getting names, getting contact details, getting their behavior and preferences. And that's where the most personalization and the most marketing opportunities live. The second, sorry, go back a slide, Nick. Um, the second, uh, the second channel are the other way. The second channel is the, the anonymous channels. So for most people that is, that is your till. Um, and for a growing number of people that may include some, some kiosks as well. So that's where you don't know who the customer is. Um, they're in the store, they're tapping a card, um, against the card reader. And a lot of cases that's where people, you know, shrug and say, well, I don't know anything about this. It's just a random order. I don't know if this person's been here before and so on. But we think that's actually not, not true. And, and I'm going to go into detail on this because I think it's important. But modern payment providers um, can provide you information on the card which has been used. So, you know, the first rule of building payments technology is never store a card number yourself because card numbers require a lot of compliance but they can provide an identifier which uniquely relates to that card, which allows you to see if that card has spent before in your store. And we know that people almost always will use the same card when they go to the same place. And we're gonna talk about an example of the power of this later, but essentially it gives you amazing data on, on return rates, um, and amazing data on, on what your customers order and the clustering of maybe you have customers who are really into this or, or that, or a group who come on the same day every week. It doesn't allow you to necessarily market to them because you don't know who they are, but it does allow you to do a lot more detailed analysis on, on preferences. And actually one of the, the super cool things which someone like Adian, um, a big payment provider allow, is you can link online payments on something like Click and Collect with card present payments at a kiosk or till, which means that if they spend once on a channel with an email, you can not only understand what they ordered that time, you can link it back to any in-store visits they made before. The final set is the third party channels. So that's mostly your, your deliveries and your just eats and so on. The data there you're always going to get is, is limited, um, as they own the customer, but you should be able to get it in the same menu format that you're getting through your other channels, you know, having to download things from, from multiple systems and, and mash it all together just to get a sense of how different, different menu items are performing. Isn't something which 
uh, makes it easy and isn't something which should be should be needed anymore. And with the, the deeper integrations now possible with them, you should be looking to get as much as possible a single view of your sales in one system. Moving away from sales, you know, we, we also have software for, for kitchen operations. Um, and this can range from a single screen where you, you, you bump an order where it's done to, you know, asynchronous, multiple kitchen stations spread out, bumping items one at a time, bringing it all together, printing tickets, and so on. And really, the, the, the criteria here should be that you're, you're able to have a, a timestamp for any time a member of staff interacts with any part of the system. Because if you want to know where your bottlenecks are, if you want to know where you can improve, you're going to need to know how long each item takes to make, when it gets started, when it gets finished, when customers are collecting it. Um, and that allows a depth of optimization, which which is well beyond that if you just get, if you come in on a single day and trying to make sure that you can, you can increase your capacity over peak is one of the, the best ways to drive, um, drive better performance. So these are things which, which we think you should be uh, demanding and talking to your current partners about, about trying to get hold of. And you know when you're working or when you're choosing future partners, it'd be something you bring as a primary criteria. It's something you want to, you want to make sure is, is important to you and is something they can offer. So yeah, this is the foundation. If you don't capture the data, the remaining steps are pointless. Um, and if you get it right, it unlocks, it unlocks a, lot of, a lot of potential to do, do super exciting and, and interesting data work. Um, I think Nick's going to talk a little bit about Yo. So, <clears throat> so Yo is a great example of a, a business that um, we're, we're certainly an analog business, so they were kind of the antithesis of data. Um, and this has been a very successful brand uh, that was market leading or has been market leading for a long period of time. You know, the belt technology is something in the late 90s that everybody talks about. But what you didn't know about Yosushi is that they had no idea what they sold. So all of their sales came in colored plates. So they knew how many purple plates they sold or how many pink plates they sold or how many green plates they sold, but they had no idea uh, what food was on the plate. So they had very, very, very little data um, to manage their stock, to manage their wastage, to do any kind of, kind of menu, um, menu deep dive. Um, and then added to that, again, as, as with many different business, hospitality businesses, they had very little customer data. Um, and so we, they were one of our first three or four software clients. And actually we'd been working with them on two, two three, four different concepts over about an 18 month period. And the Holy Grail concept was this full 100% digital ordering experience that was fully integrated with their belt, um, which was the, you know, the, the, end, the end game, which we saw in sort of four or five years time. And then towards the end of May last year, they gave us about five weeks to implement it across the whole estate, which is both exciting and terrifying in equal measure. But what it has done is that it's accelerated the Yo brand. It's, it's taken their existing belt technology, which is supplied through somebody else. They've now changed that in the way that it delivers food to your booth. And then they've used our ordering technology so that now they now um, flow all of their orders through our order and pay table um, or our click and collect. Um, and then they use our kiosks for their food to go bolt on. Um, so they now have basket level data for 95% plus of their transactions. Uh, now, they now know what they sell, which is great. Um, so uh, they can not just talk in colored plates, but they can talk in absolutes around the menu. We've also helped them a lot with their back of house operations. Um, and we talk about a single, a single view of the, of the whole operation. So uh, that, uh, that covers that customer in, customer level insight. It covers everything that's happening from a back of house perspective, uh, because we've been able to implement kitchen display screens. It covers um, our delivery integration, and then we flow all of that data into uh, the stock and supplier management system. And then we've worked with third parties uh, such as Young Pingo and others, uh, so that they can start to reuse that data. Uh, and now we're starting to have conversations about that single customer view, uh, how we flow that into their CRM system, and equally how we look at the Yo brand as it behaves through, uh, through some of the supermarkets that they have. 
so that we can start to look at Yo more of as a food retail brand that happens to have a restaurant. And I'll come on to that with a later example with Leon um, in a bit. Cool. So step one, you're, you're now capturing the data, data which you want. Step two is about making it accessible. Um, and this is true in, in every company, which is that you need to get the data in the hands of the people who need it, when they need it, in the form they need it in. Um, data that's difficult to access won't get used. And that's not because these people don't want to look at data, but it's because everyone's got a million things to do. Everyone's busy making it easy um, and, and putting it front of mind and, and getting something which people look at day to day drives so much value in terms of, of kind of making them think about it more and then making them ask the next question. Uh, if it sits in a silo, if it sits with one person who, who looks at it in a spreadsheet, it's not going to deliver the value which, um, which we believe it can. And there's a few, I guess, a few elements to that. So um, we talk about data. Um, next slide, Nick. So we talk about data needing to be uh, real time. So, you know, these days, expecting your data to be real time rather than, rather than um, delayed is, is crucial to anything you want to monitor on the day. If you want to identify fires and, and, and put them out quickly, you're going to need data that is close to real time. And you're going to need it in the places that, that people are going to look at it. So in the top right there, we have an example of a, a dashboard in the KDS that, uh, that we put in. And you know this was a, a fairly straightforward piece. It's a different view of, of data, which you can see in spreadsheets and you can see in our, in our backend reporting. But it's just a quick summary view of what's going on the day in a place that people can switch to, glance at, and then go back to using using like they do normally. In the middle of a, a busy restaurant, you're not gonna get out your laptop and do analysis, but you're gonna glance at this kind of thing. And sometimes that can, that can help you identify issues or, or opportunities which you'd otherwise miss. And that's why it's important to get your data both in a, a raw form. So when you have the time, you can sit down and, and analyze it deeply, but also in summarized forms that are, are quick to provide, to provide useful views. And how you go about that, that's going to vary hugely based on the, the type of organization you are, how big you are, how many people um, you, know, you can afford to put on this. But good tech partners will help with that process. They'll help provide data in, in useful summarized views, which they, they know work for people and be responsive to, to queries and, and, and issues which you may face. And part of getting data in, in useful places is, is connecting your systems which need to work well together. So, you know, one of the things which is common in, in, in the restaurant tech industry is to, to have an integrations page on your website and, and list a bunch of logos of, of everyone you integrate with. But the more we've, we've worked on this, the more we've realized that integrations aren't binary. It's not just you're integrated or you're not. They can work in lots of different ways. And sometimes that means a deep, powerful integration, which gives you everything you need. And sometimes it means a very surface level one which limits the capabilities uh, which you're able to achieve. So with us and someone like Airship or, or Toggle, we've tried to integrate them deeply into our system to, to unlock the value and to allow both our system and an Airship system to, to do as much as possible and bring out the best in both systems. Um, you know, and, and, and that is super important. If you, if you have an integration which doesn't work, which has, you know, requires complicated mapping, which only provides, say, order level information rather than basket level information, that means you're not getting that in the places that you need it and you're not able to get the insights which you want. And it's something which is generally true, but uh, you know, fewer systems tends to equal fewer headaches. Uh, it's always difficult getting systems to, to work together smoothly and the more you involve, the more, uh, the more that problem can get out of hand. So the next thing is, I guess, to you need to be realistic about where you're at. Um, in terms of both what you need and the time you can commit to it. So, you know, a report which people look at daily with some basic metrics is probably going to be more useful than a three month project to, to deliver the God level data in every format, which never ends up delivering the value. So um, automated, fast, in useful places uh, and according to the needs of your, your organization. Um, and, you know, there's some great, great third parties you can bring in, such as just Data Hawks, who did a, some talks a few weeks ago to, to maybe help, help with that process if you're not sure where to get started. But 
don't panic and take it step by step um, and get data in front of the people who need it. And Nick's going to talk about Boston Tea Party. So um, I guess a great case study, and, and it's, it's, it's a very relevant case study for this session because uh, we work at Boston Tea Party with both Ashif and Toggle, but um, the Boston Tea Party again, and I'll talk about, I guess the first step is always the change process. So Boston Tea Party actually had no dish ordering. They had no delivery aggregator platforms in place, and they were very much focused on the brand and who they are, the customer experience, and the way they interact uh, with their customers. And so to actually to launch, order, and pay a table, and click and collect, and then eventually Deliveroo, for them, was, it was a huge change piece. And they were, they were actually very fearful of that change initially. Um, but we worked really closely with them, and we got, again, a high percentage of sales. And this is super important, because by switching on order and pay at table, again, by changing their style of service, but by doing that in such a way that it became part of their brand and it really represented their brand in the right way. We got a very, very high percentage of their overall sales through our platform. And that means data and that's super, super key. So they're suddenly in this whole new world where you know, 95% of their sales is going through either click and collect an order and pay at table. Um, and that means from a marketing perspective, you know, and I've, um, and they do, they, Boston Tea Party do love Vita Mojo and Hesha for the big heart. And, um, Anita Atkins, who's their brand director, has, has been you know, great with us and has openly said that. And our ability to create that ecosystem, as Rob was talking about, so with Airship, with Toggle, again, here we work with Feed It Back from a feedback perspective, with wireless social as a trigger if somebody comes into the building uh, or into the restaurant. So that connected ecosystem, using all of that data that we're flowing through our system, and of course, there's ancillary benefits, like ATV, et cetera, labor reductions. But fundamentally, we've created this engine with, with Boston Tea Party um, that allows us, us to digitize their experience. And it flows all of this great data into some of the other third party uh, partners that they work with. Cool. Um, step three, uh, you know, you have the data, it's accessible. You need to start to draw the insights. Um, what is it telling you? Are there any easy wins? And this will, you know, this is very completely by, by the type of organization you are and the type of problems and opportunities you have. And, you know, we at Vita Mojo can definitely not tell you the right thing um, to look at for you and the right, the right insights to, to draw. You know, we operate at our own restaurants. We, um, we got insights there, but what's relevant for a, a heavily customizable QSR in the middle of London is probably going to be less applicable to a, a pub somewhere in the countryside. So um, it's the way you have to kind of look at it and try and try and answer some, some questions. And again, um, our advice is to, to take it one step at a time and to, to think about what's the, the most burning question you have um, and how you can, how can you look into it most effectively? So on the next slide, yeah, uh, start with something important, think about some hypotheses and, and recognize the limitations of your data. But this is where we're going to take an example from our own restaurants, which, which is that even straightforward situations can sometimes have hidden depth um, and can be worth looking into in more detail. So the Vita Mojo salmon story, as it's become known. So um, those who don't know, we sold yeah, heavily customized food in QSR. Um, and you know, it was choose your own protein, choose your carbs, choose your, your veg and your sauce and so on. And we saw uh, that salmon wasn't selling very well. Uh, you know, it was, it was a, a low sales item. So we thought, okay, well, let's take it off the menu and replace it with, replace it with something else, which people like, might like more. So we, we took it off the menu um, and we got a few complaints and we were like, sure, you know, some people would have, would have liked it, but not too many people. So it's fine. And then we got some more and then we got some more. And then we looked into what had actually happened. And we'd been assuming this top row, we'd been assuming that we had a bunch of customers, all of whom occasionally ordered salmon, but they ordered a bunch of other stuff. And so they wouldn't really care if it was removed off the menu. If anything, they'd like the opportunity to try something new. But then we looked into this payment information we were talking about earlier and, and segmented according to what people ordered. And what we found was, was something very different. We had a bunch of customers who basically never ordered salmon at all. Um, and, and, you know, it, it didn't matter if it was there, but they never ordered it. And then a much smaller subset of people who ordered it essentially every single time they came. Um, so in the bottom, we have the, the salmon lovers. 
And that's a completely different situation because if it's all of the people liking it a bit, you can remove it, no problem. But if it's a small number of people liking it a lot and you take it off the menu, suddenly you've lost those customers. Um, and that kind of insight both required capturing that, that payment information to link things together. And then step two, making it accessible and looking at things in the right way and digging a little deeper to understand what's going on. And that's, uh, well, I guess in, in the end result, we did put, put Salmon back on the menu, sent the, the customers we could identify some, uh, some emails to announce it. And, and it all worked out happily. But really, the, the lesson is that even, even straightforward situations, if you dig deeply, can give you really powerful insights to, to drive better decision making. Um, and that's really step four, which is, which is drive action. And, you know, it's actionable insights is, is somewhat of a buzzword. But, but really, you know, you want your insights are as valuable as what you can do with them. Um, and sometimes that's fine. Some things you do anyway, you already have to design your kitchen layouts and space planning and menu design and, and having the insights will help. But when it comes to the customer relationship and the, and the digital marketing um, and, 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 and email marketing and so on, you're really going to be uh, limited by the capabilities of your technology stack to then provide that value and those offers back to customers. So we're talking about things like discounts and loyalty. We're talking about things like toggle with gift cards. We're talking about subscription. The more levers you have to, to offer your customers different experiences and different offers and, and different personalization, um, the more success you're going to get. And, you know, another thing you should be looking for in, in ordering partners and in CRM partners is to, is to both have those capabilities and then make it easy to, to drive those actions. Um, and Nick can talk a bit about uh, Leon. So, Le so Leon um, have been, again, one of our oldest clients, um, and they certainly have been on a digital journey uh, since we started to work with them. They recognize themselves that they wanted to be a more data-driven organization. And as Hugo says here, to, you know, they had 250Ks worth of customers coming through a week through their doors, but they had very little data on any of those transactions. And really, that there's been a journey. Uh, some of it's changed process. So again, as with the previous two examples, there has to be a way in which you can capture that data um, because Leon are in the quick service sector as opposed to the casual dining sector. That the way in has been to both look at kiosks, which have, again, other ancillary benefits, but one of the areas that you can really leverage kiosks is by onboarding people onto your click and collect. And of course, as soon as somebody orders through click and collect, um, you have all of their data. But, and to, uh, to Rob's point, they've looked at areas such as subscription. So we supported Lauren with the coffee subscription last autumn. And really, that was more of a play for data. So to try and bring as many people as possible into the Leon Club. Uh, and we had over, I think, 6,000 new members um, coming into the Leon Club over a two-month period. And actually for Leon, again, going back to the point around Yo. For Leon, they want, to, they want to be seen as a food retail brand, probably already have been, already are a food retail brand that happen to have bricks and mortar restaurants. And for, for them to be able to be, to be successful at that, they have to be able to create different channels. They have to understand how that customer behaves across those channels. Then they have to be able to communicate. They have to be able to reward. They have to be able to get their feedback. They have to be able to incentivize and nudge that customer behavior. So they become a Leon customer, that they have a single customer view, and they can start to personalize the experience on behalf of each of their customers. And that's very much Leon's digital strategy moving forward. Um, and that's very much how we're supporting them to do that. Cool. So uh, quickly wrap, wrap up as, as conscious of time. Um, so what our takeaways would be, number one, believe in the value of data. Um, you probably do already if you're, if you're joining this kind of webinar, but, um, but all precedent from, from every industry suggests that this is only going in one direction. And even if you don't know exactly where the value sits right now, um, it will end up being realized. The second is to build the right foundations. Um, if you don't have them in place, everything will feel hard. Everything will be difficult to do. You're not going to be capturing the data. You're not going to be able to look at it. And then finally, it's take it one step at a time. You know, once you have that in place, data is a, a process, not a, not a big bang. You're not going to achieve it all at once. Um, take something, start small, get a result, and then move on to the next one. Uh, and if you do that over a period of months and years, that's how, that's how transformation ends up happening. 
thanks for um for listening hopefully there's something something of value there and i think we've got time for time for some questions excellent thanks guys that was really good i'm sure everyone that's attended can agree i feel like the power of data has been effectively um explained there so <laughs> Um, we have actually got a few questions as well. So um, shall I just read them out and sort of whoever's best to answer you guys can answer. Amazing. Cool. So first one is, um, so have you managed to join up Leon's retail customer data and restaurant data? If, ha if not, how would you do this in the future? So yes, yeah, so that's an interesting question. So we, we haven't yet with Leon. Um, we are talking with a couple of other brands about how we can do this in the future. The, the, the main challenge is that if you have any retail products that you are beholden to the, uh, the, to the POS, to the point of sale that's being used by uh, that supermarket. And so, and that's very difficult data to get hold of. But what we are talking about doing is trying to, it could be as simple as QR codes on packaging trying to allow customers in a retail setting to earn loyalty that would automatically onboard them into um, potentially a click and collect version of that brand's menu um, and then allow that customer to redeem that loyalty through uh, into the bricks and mortar locations. So in essence, it would create that bridge between the retail customer and the bricks and mortar customer and also would help nudge the retail customers to, um, to use the bricks and mortar restaurant locations. Cool. Excellent. Shall I run through a couple more? Sure. Um, we've got, we've got time, haven't we? So, um, nice and easy one. What does a good integration, uh, sorry, a good integrated system look like? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of what, what I touched upon. You want to, you want to allow, you know, you, you pick your partners based on what they can, they can offer in their space, right? Be that, CRM, be that digital ordering, be that be that a kitchen system. Um, a good integration means that you're able to realize the value of everything they offer. So, you know, if you have to limit the systems in order to get them to work together, because, you know, this system can't understand menus which work in this way, so therefore you can't put that on your menu, or this system needs it in this format, and you end up, you know, sometimes creating a, a poorer customer experience to get the data into your kitchen correctly, or a great customer experience, but, but, but the kitchen operations is a nightmare. Um, if you're not getting that kind of, uh, that kind of mutually beneficial setup, then it's a bad integration because you're not getting the value which you now need out of both systems. And maybe you could have gone for, for cheaper systems, which did less because you're not able to take full advantage. So that's really the, the criteria and, and it's going to vary hugely by the, the space you're operating in and the type of system. But, um, it's definitely worth digging deeper and understanding, you know, what, how does it work and what does, and, and, and more importantly, what does it doesn't do? Sounds good. There, there is another question that's quite similar. So I've got another question here though, um, which I like the sound of, I'm interested to know myself. Um, what are Vita Mojo's plans for the future in terms of data and the product? Great question. Um, <laughs> probably a couple of different, uh, directions or, 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 or themes we want to we want to go in so um the first is to increase the amount of personalization in our digital ordering journeys um so you know we have reasonably sophisticated uh discounting and and, and subscription and and gift card capabilities in, in conjunction with people like Toggle. um but the journey itself uh and the 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 flow you see and and how the menu shown to different customers there's loads more potential there to make that journey even more customized to surface the products they're likely to want or likely to want to try, to try and um, uh, increase the engagement to give them really personalized offers as they go through. Um, and, and so that's really, you know, it's always been something we've we've tried to do, but there's there's still a long way to go in terms of, of creating that super, super dynamic journey. Um, and the second theme is really on the on the other side, the 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 back end of providing data back to people in the best possible form. Um, we're still in a situation where we, we provide reports, which summarize reports, which work for most people, but you can't always get the exact one, which is right for you. Um, we think it's possible to build systems where you can almost build your own reporting and, and really go, right, okay, my restaurant or 
my coffee shop and my pub cares about these metrics. And so I'm gonna build a dashboard just for me, which surfaces exactly what I need to see. And the more that we can enable that in a, in a way that allows people to self-serve, again, the more useful the reports become and the more they can, um, the more they can get out of it. So I think that's the other, the other direction we also wanna go in. Cool, sounds exciting. Hopefully we're doing a lot of, you know, case studies and exciting things with that as well, with Airship. Um, that's all the questions I've got. Let me just double check that nothing's come through in the last couple of seconds. No? Cool. Excellent. So I guess to summarise, and also as a reminder for anyone who joined slightly late, um, Beats Mojo are offering one free month um, for any new customers until the end of May. So do get in contact. We'll send out um, contact details and sort of a summary and also this recorded webinar um, after. But on top of that, also with Airship CRM and Toggle's free until June offer, you could have a pretty impressive tech ecosystem if you're looking to sort of revamp everything. So keep that in mind, everyone. Um, but I think that's everything. Unless you have anything else to add, Nick and Rob? Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you for, for, thank you for yeah, listening. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> Um, speak to you all soon.